It's locked. Howdy, Clue Crew. Ready for another episode of Nancy Drew? Get your clue notepad ready. This mystery is getting real spooky. Nancy Drew is almost here. Hang tight a few more moments, and we're going to jump right into the mystery. Howdy, folks! Welcome to Charlie J Space here on YouTube, <laughs> and welcome back to yet another episode of Nancy Drew: The Secret of Shadow Ranch. What a secret that is! It's so secret we don't even know the secret. Well, we kind of know the secret, but we haven't seen the secret. And by secret, I mean the phantom horse that may or may not be legit until we see it ourselves. And of course, Nancy doesn't really believe in uh, the supernatural, so to speak. So you know she's got a logical explanation for all of this. So let's see what we can find out. Now, if y'all can remember from the last episode, we are finishing up some chores for Shorty. Uh, Chores for shorty. Oh, that's right. We caught the eggs. We got all the eggs. We got picked the vegetables. Um, and we fixed the basket for the vegetables. That was pretty cool too. Nifty Nancy. Always has some trick up her sleeve. Always knows a good way around things or, you know, um, a good understanding of how to fix things. She's just a know-it-all. Um, in the best way possible. Not a know-it-all. <laughs> uh, she's a know-it-all. A humble know-it-all. Um, Jack of all trades. That's what I was trying to think of. She's a jack of all trades. Detective first, but she knows quite a lot about what she does. <laughs> about many different things. Um, <clears throat> now, the one thing, though, we haven't finished for Shorty uh, is building the fire for the big cookout. <clears throat> now, I'm certain uh, we're look we need more kindling. I'm pretty sure we have a great deal of kindling. That look does look like a lot, right? Well, apparently not enough. Apparently we need just maybe one or two, I'm thinking one or two bundles more. Um, there is absolutely no kindling here at the ranch. And I have made certain of that. You guys know we've checked every nook and cranny that we possibly could, right? You can agree. There's nothing. So we really, <laughs> we, I think we need to start looking in other places. And now that we've passed Texas test, <laughs> Texas test get it Texas had y'all <laughs> oh, like the state Texas the Texas test gosh I didn't realize how that <laughs> that sounds once you say it out loud um the last episode and what was I gonna say about that yes yeah, so we, we passed Texas test <laughs> and we answered all the questions correct after some trial and error and a little bit of you know uh, research and stuff. Um, and we were able to meet Mary Ozzy over at her trading post, um, gift shop, whatever you like to call it there, right off the, right off the highway by the sounds of, by the looks of it anyways, the interstate, um, very cozy little place, very, very cozy. And she seems like a really sweet gal. Um, she isn't too fond of the Raleigh's only because she's trying to buy, it sounds like when we approached her and we, um, first introduced ourselves, um, of course, we had that letter we were asked to give her from the Raleigh's uh, on behalf of Ed Raleigh. So when we did and she read it, she seemed very upset. And when we inquired about that, she basically said that she was trying to buy a purchase, um, just a small sliver of land uh, in the back of her property, which I guess lines up with their property at the ranch. So it really would have been that big of an inconvenience, I guess. But they said no. So she's a little upset about that. Now, um, 
one thing I found particularly interesting is that she want just the fact she wanted to buy a little piece of land off the ranch. And we keep hearing about how, or well, I'm not sure where we heard. I think in the letters and such. And I think from, uh, someone mentioned, I think the treasure being buried or this thing or a certain amount of things or yeah, treasure that Dirk Valentine wanted, uh, Francis Humber to find. Um, it sounds like it's buried somewhere or possibility of it being buried here on the ranch is very probable. So if Mary Ozzie knows about that information, maybe that's her motive for wanting to buy a little chunk of land. You know what I'm saying? Seems a little sus to me. She seems like a sweetheart. She seems fairly, uh, uh, fairly, uh, unharmed. She doesn't seem like she'd harm anyone. Very sweet. So I don't know. I don't know. But most people, we know, we know most suspects that are the prime suspect usually are good at playing nice and giving appearances. You know what I'm saying? So we'll just have to dig a little harder. And I think we need, there's another location I noticed on the map <clears throat> when me and uh, us and Bob were going home here <laughs> from Ariazzi's. Um, and it was seemed a little far off to the right. So we're going to check that out first thing. And uh, maybe we'll find that extra kindling. All right, folks. You got your tea? Voila. What tea do you drink? I'm curious. What tea do you drink? Maybe your coffee gal or sir. Let me know. Comments below. I never asked that before. What do you drink? <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking green tea. This is this is my jumbo liter and a half of green tea right here. Or maybe it's two liters. I don't know. But one of these a day just sets me on my way. <laughs> uh three tea bags too. So yeah, it's 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 that Dr. Lee green tea. So it's half the caffeine of say Lipton's and stuff like that. And green tea is a very, very small percentage of green tea, uh caffeine to begin with. So if you think of the caffeine, I'll just run, <laughs> I'll just teach you. This is my lesson of the day for y'all about green tea. Uh, yeah. So you know how coffee obviously has a high amount of caffeine. That's just a, a natural, normal amount of caffeine. Most people can't handle it. You know, like me, I get the jitters and I'm like, <laughs> and I can't, yeah, it's just too much for me. So I can't do it. Um, however, for an orange pico tea, um, that uses, if I, I hope I'm getting this right, the orange pico tea, just regular old tea, you'd put milk and cream and sugar, whatever. Um, that is about half the caffeine, or potency anyways, of coffee. So about half. So that's not too bad. So you get one of those and probably feel okay. You wouldn't feel so jittery or whatever. All that kind of other stuff that comes along with chugging a good old hot cup of java. And then the green tea. So you take that half that's now in the orange pico. And then you take, I think, just one eighth or one half of that caffeine amount and that's what goes into green tea so green tea has fairly little caffeine to it there's not much going on in there um and the specific brand i buy dr lee's organic green tea is a much bigger box too than any of the other ones you can get i think it's like 120 150 tea bags <laughs> oh it's really good um but that one has half the amount of caffeine it's low in caffeine so if you think of how low it already is to begin with the, the caffeine in green tea this stuff is even lower so it, it works for me though and with three tea bags you know it kind of probably brings it back up to somewhere close to that level that say lipton's or other green teas would have so it's not too bad i love the taste i love um, it's got a lot of antioxidants in it, so it really makes you sweat and, and just kind of purge all the crap going on in your body, toxins and whatnot. So you sweat a little bit, but I'm protected. I'm protected. I've got some, uh, some of that deodorant that's, you know, doesn't show up on your clothes and antiperspirant, I think. I don't know. It's unscented though, so I can never tell if I'm, if I stink or not. I guess I'd know if I stunk, but it's not like I smell very good unless I put on some perfume, but... <laughs> but anyways, you got your tea. That's all that matters. That's my lesson for the day. Case closed. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> and you got a blanket? Oh, got to stay cozy. Oh, you do. Look at that blanket. It's red. It looks just like this, but red. Oh, very cool. I like that. Mm, you look cozy. And that actually is, leads us up to the last question, of course. Are you comfortable? Are you cozy? 
as long as you're good as long as you're fine we can carry on let's have a good time all right folks let's jump right into this so um actually oh ah timer oh i'm so not prepared i also need our journal of notes hello there timer is on notes are open <laughs> actually i'm gonna leave that oh i'm gonna leave that over there yeah that that's that's probably a lot better we just do it like that there we go i'm situated now <laughs> all right clue crew let's do this thing. let's go for a horsey ride <laughs> Uh, Mariazzi doesn't seem to like the Raleigh's very much. Okay, so Dave was right about that. Um, uh, Mariazzi, find out whether the hearts and doves design on the trunk got Mariazzi has anything to do with how to open it. Oh, hearts and doves. Oh, so maybe it's the same. I haven't done that yet. Um. Sorry, I don't know what that was. Build a cooking fire, because that's the last thing I have to do for, for a shorty. Um, we did check. that. Very good and important that you always check your to-do list before you begin. Any save or anything like that. Just to make sure you know what you've already done. Just to refresh your mind. My mind has a refresh system. <laughs> ah, a very quick refresh system. These days, anyways. I'm just like, huh? <laughs> 10, 20 minutes pass by, if I'm doing something new, I don't know what happened before. I just, yeah. Short term, memory loss seems relevant up in this noggin. Uh, figure out how to open that trunk. Okay, so what I'm thinking now, because remember, we opened the trunk with the blankets in it, and it took it, uh, <clears throat> to open it, we needed to use these things right here. So I'm wondering if we use those in the same trunk which is relevant because we've already tested it in the last episode but just the way they turn i wonder if it has something to do with the hearts and the doves like nancy's saying uh, where did she say it right here i know whether that the heart that hearts and doves design on the trunk at mariazzi's has anything to do with how to open it oh call that romance novelist okay Let's call her first, then. All right, that's it. If you don't know enough to take the saddle and bridle off your horse before you go traipsing off, you don't deserve a horse. No more riding for you, sister. Uh-oh. <laughs> Whoopsie! <laughs> oh, my. Okay, well, it looks like we're going to have to stay responsible here. Yikes. Oh, Tex was not happy with us. That was for sure. There. Bob, Bob's a lot happier now that weight off his back. Sorry, Bob. Oh my gosh. Not even thinking. <clears throat> I should have done that the moment we got in from the, from the ride. Okay, there we go. There we go. Happy Tex. Good. You still here? You sound, you sound surprised. surprised. You and your friends, if they ever show up, you ain't gonna last more than three days out here. The what makes you say that? Why are you so certain? Oh! <laughs> Spunky Nancy. Look at that. Well, Let's... I hope you like surprises, Tex, because you're in for one. City folk <laughs> can't take living out here. Too rugged. Too much work. <clears throat> too dangerous. Well. Talk to you later. No hurry. He knows very little about me because I grew up in a small country town, so... I ain't no city folk. Maybe Nancy, but definitely not me. What about y'all? Y'all city folk? I don't know. I don't know. You just let me know in the comments below. How about that? All right. Study up on horses so I can pass. The I haven't day. done that yet. Wait, what? But we did. Oh, uh, uh, you know Jack. what happened? It, it, it took us way too far back. 
<laughs> I gotta go to this save. Yes. Are you sure you want it? Yes. Okay. See, cause look, 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 look. See. Okay. So it acted like we didn't even go to Mariazzi's when we clicked that second chance. Okay. All right. Uh. Cause we did do that. That's done. Check. And that's done. Okay. Great. Great. So now we can carry on here. Call the lady. Okay. So now let's make sure. <laughs> We do this right. Righty right. There we go. <laughs> I was gonna say, cause we are we did pass Texas test. That was the whole Yeah, that's right. Alright, let's put it back. And we're gonna have to have that conversation with him again. <sighs> there we go. Whoa, deja vu. <laughs> you still here? Whoa, deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> you sound surprised. You and your friends, if they ever show up, you ain't gonna last more than three days out here. Well, I hope you like surprises, Tex, because you're in for one, buckaroo. Well, I hope you like surprises, Tex, because you're in for one. City folk can't take living out here. Too rugged, too much work, too dangerous. Yeah, yeah, Talk yeah. to you later. Yahoo. Yeah, <laughs> Yahoo. <laughs> he is something else. I actually don't I don't mind him. I think he's kind of cool. Little uh little sussy. But I think that's just his demeanor. He's just one of those, you know, bandit cowboy kind of guys. Um Right, let's call Charlena. That's what he is. Yes, 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 yes. Charlena Perseo. The romance novelist. There was a book of hers in the bookshop. What is it this time? Uh, excuse me? Nancy, hi. Sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Wait, what? I thought I called Charlena. Unless he's, is Joe working for us? <laughs> Who'd you think I was? Hey, Nancy. Hi, Frank. I thought you were this guy we're doing some work for. You guys are on a case? That's great. No, it's not. Turns out the guy is a bit neurotic. What? What do you mean? <laughs> he wants us to track down his missing laptop. He left it in a restaurant. Only he keeps calling us. Yeah, like every two minutes. He's become a real nuisance. Maybe you should just quit. Can't. Why, Why not? not? The guy's <laughs> filthy rich. And if we find that laptop, he said he'd make us filthy rich. But the real reason we can't Someone's quit is promise? he's the son of our mother's best friend. Yeah. If we quit, we'd uh... never hear the end of it. Uh-oh, we've got another call. Let him leave a message for the nine millionth time. <laughs> so, Nancy, tell us about the ranch. Oh, jeez. I didn't think I called the Hardy Boys. That's funny. Well. The Raleigh's aren't here because Mr. Raleigh was bitten by a rattlesnake last night. Whoa. How bad off is he? He's still in the hospital, but they think he's going to be okay. And that's not all Ooh. that happened last night. We're listening. Apparently, this glowing horse came running up to the ranch house, caused everybody to go rushing out to look. Then went racing off into the night. We get nut jobs who can't keep track of their computers. And what does Nancy get? <laughs> Horses that glow in the dark. Yeah, I mean, well. I know life isn't fair, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, hop on a plane and come on down if you feel like it. <laughs> uh, let's see. We know how to build the fire. We're just looking for some more kindling. Uh, I'd love to see what's inside this little trunk at Mary's. They're probably going to tell us, tell us to call uh, Charlena. I'm sure. When it comes to using that piece of paper, Dirk, let's just ask him. I'd yours. love to see what's inside this old trunk at Mary's, but I need a hint when it comes to opening Call it. Charlena. Just do what you did to open that blanket chest. Oh. The trick is knowing how far and in what direction to turn each key. I'll bet that hearts and doves and initial stuff that's carved in the trunk is the real key. You've got a trunk that probably dates back to the Old West, and a carving that suggests romance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the only way to book some answers is to call an call expert. Call it, mm-hmm. Subtle, Frank. Very subtle. <laughs> Catch you later. Stay safe. Watch out for varmints. Uh, okay, let's call Charlena. I could have sworn I called her. Charlena Purcell's office. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. May I, I say that speak to Miss Purcell? Charlena. Concerning. I'm staying at a ranch in central Arizona, and since she knows so much about the history of Arizona, I thought maybe she could answer some questions for me. 
questions concerning? Well, I came Jeez. across a very old trunk that might contain assistant. stuff that has to do with these people named Dirk Valentine and Francis Humber. Only I can't open it. Did you say Dirk Valentine? And his girlfriend, Francis Humber, yes. Ah, but would you hold, please? Who's this guy smoking? Thank you for holding, <laughs> and thank you for calling the office of Charlena Purcell. Miss <laughs> latest novel, like Wind Through My Heart, was an instant bestseller. <laughs> and like so many of her novels, it recently received the Catherine Coop Award for Historical Excellence. Reading a Charlena Purcell novel I love is like Lanny traveling Manella. through time I just to love the old Southwest on the, the voice of actress. love. She this does is Charlena. Everything. Who is this again? Uh, Nancy Drew. She does so many Tell voices me about the trunk you found. Well... What a range, though. What a range. I just love her so much. To open it, I need to put these wrenches in these three holes, but I don't know in which directions they need to be pointing. Oh, yeah, the lock seems to have something to do with this image. The lock seems to have something to do with this image that's engraved on the trunk right above it. Describe the image. It's this kind of abstract design made up of hearts and doves and the initials E-H and A-H. E-H would be Eldridge Humber and A-H would be Abigail Humber. Frances Humber's grandparents on her father's side. Oh, her mother died older. when she was ten. Now, the picture no doubt commemorates their wedding day, which was... 4-9-11. April 9th, 1811. Oh, 4 oh, 9 11 April 9th <laughs> That's all I needed 1811 Okay, cool Well, we're gonna go open that trunk <laughs> Actually, maybe I should leave this here A little closer Alright Those numbers must have something to do with the directions in which those wrenches need to be pointing. Mm. I'm afraid I wouldn't know. In the course of my research, I've only read about the trunks Merrill and Eldridge Humber handcrafted. I've never actually opened one. However, I've been running across fascinating tidbits concerning the Humber family and stashing them away for years. When I have enough tidbits stashed away, I may well write a book about them. Then you'd probably Ooh. be very interested to know what's in this trunk. Yes, I would. And since I've helped you, or tried to, it's only fair that you help me, don't you think? Sure, I'll keep you posted. Did I mention that I'm staying at Shadow Ranch? This just gets better and better. I'll tell my <laughs> assistant to put your calls through immediately. By the way, oh, why you. are you so interested in the Humbers? Knowing more about them and what happened in the past may help me figure out something that's going on in the present. I'm kind of a detective. That makes two of us. I'll be waiting to hear from you. <laughs> I like her. I like Charlena Purcell. She's got that knacking, she's got a knackering detective. Uh... My whole head just reset. Oh my gosh, yes, we're going to marry us. <laughs> oh, I was so blown away by uh, Charlena. I forgot what I was doing. All right. See you later, Tex. <laughs> you take care now. All right, Bobby Bob. Let's get you on the road here. I should make sure I have my gloves on, too. What the heck? <laughs> How do I... Uh, I forget how we ride the horse. Oh. Oh, I know. I know. This way. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. Oops. <laughs> I'm infamous for doing that. Oh. Trail stop. Cougar bend. Okay, let's go to Mary Oz's first. Because we got a chest to open. 04, 09, 11. So that's like 1, 2, 3. Wait. I love the music in this game. Crazy Would to you think. mind if I try to get this open? Please do. In fact, if you get it open, I'll let you keep something from it. You can have your pick. 
Well, thank you, Miss Yazi. <laughs> I love her name, by the way. Okay. Uh, let's get in here. You know, I do kind of want to save first. Only because... Only because... If I pick the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? There may be a bunch to choose from. And I don't want to mess this up. Okay. So, 04. So, 1. 1 o'clock. Wait, 12 o'clock. 1 o'clock. 2 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Let's let go back to 12. 12 o'clock. 1 o'clock. 2 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 4 o'clock. 5 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 7, 8. 9 o'clock. Okay, and now 11. So, if that's 9. 10, 11. I got the trunk open. Great, thank you. Go ahead and take something from it. You deserve a reward. You don't even want to see first. She doesn't even want to. She doesn't want to see. What's in here first? Okay. See, I can. Look at this. You can take the frying pan, the scissors, this. Oh, you can't take that. Badge looks kind of cool. But of course, we we definitely need the, the pocket watch because we've got. The key for it. I think that's the key for it. It might open it up. But I mean, if the other one had a secret in it and some secret stuff, then we definitely want to get another uh, family heirloom. But you know what? I really want this frag pan. <laughs> These pair of scissors might come in handy. <laughs> no, we're taking this. Oh, wait. Yeah, we don't need the badge. If I want something else from the trunk, I should oh. put back what I took before. Right. Wait. Do we take it then? Oh, okay. Good. All right. Very good. Neato. Well, we did that. Let's check that off. Check. Uh, figure out. I'm finished with that. Can't check that off till it's oh, done. Oh, right. Find out why Mary is so eager to buy that property. That's a very good question. We need to figure that out because remember I was saying if she has a uh, feeling that there is a hidden treasure or buried treasure left for Dirk Valentine leaving for uh, Francis, she might know about it and she might want to own that piece of land because if she finds the treasure on that land, it would be hers to keep, not the Rowley's. Hi, can I help you with something? Uh, it was great talking to you. Ride safely. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Charlene Purcell. She kind of looks and sounds like Meryl Streep. Hey, eh? if you squint a little bit, she looks like Meryl Streep. And when you listen to her voice, it, she literally sounds like Meryl Streep. They can make a movie based off this. Nancy Drew, The Secret of Shadow Ranch, the movie. And they could have Meryl Streep as Charlena Purcell. I don't know who they'd hire as Nancy. You know, the girl who plays, I don't know her name, but the girl who plays the Nancy Drew on the television show on the CW, Nancy Drew, which I just love. What a great adaption of Nancy Drew. A modern take, but not too modern. They didn't, you know, screw it up. Didn't totally Gen Z it, you know what I'm saying? They didn't totally uh, make it ruin it <clears throat> um <laughs> no i really liked her as as an actress for nancy drew i think that would be a really good she'd be really good in a movie spin-off uh right now we got to go to the trail stop because we got to find look at there's all kinds of kindling look at all that kindling there's probably all kinds of kindling around here oh see look at this okay Oh, we're going to find kindling in no time. Oh, an arrowhead. Cool beans. Right on. What is this? Here lies Charlie. Best mule whatever lived. Never. Kicked me or nothing. What? <laughs> Here lies Charlie. Best mule whatever lived. Never. Kicked me or nothing. R.I.P. Oh, never kicked me or nothing. Okay. That's very odd. 
Oh, that's the only thing we can do over there. Any kindling around here? I could pull this dried up bush out of the ground. Is that another arrowhead? Oh my goodness! Wowza! This is fantastic. Better not leave old Bob behind. Oh, I, right. <laughs> I don't want to leave anyways, but not yet. There's so much to look at. I feel like I'd really love it out here, like to live here. Ooh, another arrowhead. I wonder if we could sell these to Mariazzi. Oh, look at another one. Wow. How many is that now? Four arrowheads. <gasps> that looks like kindling. <laughs> right? I think I'll let Bob do the walking. Oh, okay. So that's all then. No kindling. Gosh darn. Oh. oh, I think there's a rattlesnake under there. Yeah, we... Ow! <laughs> yeah, we're just going to leave that alone. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Rattlesnake. We will leave you alone. Yeesh. Okay. Well, that was interesting, though. There was a latch under there. Like, there's a little hidden compartment. So are we are sure that there's absolutely no more arrowheads? No. All's good. Okay. All right. It's all clear. All right, Bob. Cougar Band. All right. Let's check this out now. Cougar Bane. Now, if we can't find kindling here, then something is terribly wrong. <laughs> Alright. I'm sure we might find some more arrowheads, though. Hmm. Wait a minute. The hieroglyph thing. That looks like this. Oh, I went way too fast. <laughs> oh, another one! Another arrowhead. Gosh, arrowheads for days. What's over here? What's up there? If I had a rope, I could lasso that tree branch and pull myself up. Oh. Well, we're gonna get all 007 on it. That's what you want to do, Nancy, Drew. <gasps> Wait a minute. What? What? I don't understand. So we take the hieroglyphs that we find and we put them. Oh, I see, but I need to know exactly where that is. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, so I should probably step back. <laughs> right? And look at it from here. Okay. So it's like right there. Okay. Let's see if we can do that. Right there. There we go. There we go. Okay, now this one. Where was that one? That one was... Oh, they're very hidden, aren't they? Kind of to the left of... That one, but lower. I guess this one. Unless there's another. Oh, I see another one. This one goes right here. This is fun. It's like a hieroglyph, uh, what do you call it? I spy with my little eye. <gasps> oh. Now, 
Now, I feel like there's ones... Oh, I guess I could look here to see. There's three hieroglyphs up there. <gasps> there's one down here. By the looks of the chart. Oh, right there. Cool. So it, it's starting to give us letters. Some letters. Um, what about up here? I guess we won't see those ones until we get a rope. Okay. Huh, where else? Oh, over here. Ah, look at that! Okay, this is this is fairly easy then to kind of scope out. Okay. Now these ones up above will probably be a little more difficult. Or maybe not so much because as long as we can get up here, I feel like all of these, we'll get these two on the way up when we last saw ourselves. And then I'm sure once we get up there, these ones will be quite um, easy to, to get down or to get in front of. And maybe if there's a way that we can kind of cross over here, it looks like maybe we could stand up here and just do the same over there. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Oh! Or we can just walk right up. <laughs> well, that's a lot easier. Okay. So this one. Oh, look at all the different symbols we have now. Who's there? Oh, neat. Neat. <laughs> neat. And this one, Birdman. Goes there. Apison. Apison. Oh, we're getting a, some words formulating here. Interesting words. What did that give us? Oh, exclamation mark. <gasps> what is that, though? Oh, I see. Okay. This one goes above. And I think that one goes below. Because there's one right here. Someone just touched my arm. Creepy. <laughs> okay, so the hand goes there. Beneath. Oh, beneath. Beneath. Beneath something. So these ones now, that's all we gotta figure out. But we need a rope. <laughs> Hi, Bob! <laughs> Look at him just stand over there. He's <laughs> so cute. Aww, Bobby boy. God, the views up here must be incredible too. Oh, I'd love to. I would just love to be here. I'd love to just explore the world. But Arizona just seems so slept on, you know? It's, it's got such beautiful designs and, and natural formations. You'd spend a whole day out here, ride your horse back home, and God, I love it. Okay. Oh, no signal out here. Well, that's good to know. Any more arrowheads? No. All right. Well, maybe we should stop by before we go back to the ranch. I think it's probably good we go uh, back to Mariazzi's and ask about these arrowheads. We might be able to um, to trade them for something. Something we might need, maybe. She does have an arrowhead collection, doesn't she? <clears throat> or at least I thought she did. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, she's got some up there. Well, let's see. Hi, can I help you with something? Uh. It was great talking to you. Catch you later. Catch you later. All right, catch you later. <laughs> catch you outside. How about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, as usual, get Texas permission to go riding. I haven't done that yet. But I thought we already had his permission. Can't oh, check that off right. yet. Okay. Uh, oh, we don't know about that either. A uh, little cooking fire. Oh, that's right. We never found any kindling. How annoying is that? <clears throat> I'm 
look at his bob. Oh, look at his bob. That'd be so much fun. All right, buddy boy. Got to get this thing off you. Oops. There. Now I'll take that. And we're just going to put that away. Like so. Gosh, look at all those arrowheads. How many did we... Uh -oh. oh, whoopsie. I better put that back. Oh, <laughs> oops. Did that come out of... Jane Ash. Huh? This is the chick or man. No, Jane. Yeah, the, the chick that left the letter in the... The desk. It's a certain desk. Something desk. <laughs> but it looks like... She sent one to text too. Happy birthday. Oh my Aww. gosh, Jane Nash is Tex's sister. What? Lasso yourself a wild one, partner. I still can't believe I've got a real live cowboy for a brother. Your little sister Jane. Aww. Well. Hey, I couldn't take the Coco Kringle. Really? Okay, first of all, let's see if we can unlock this. I wonder how you open this. With this. Bingo! <laughs> F.H. Francis Humber? Oh, here we go again. All right. Oh, well. That was a, a lucky start. Oh, one nine. Okay, five. No. One nine eleven. Ah, one nine eleven seven. Oh, one nine eleven seven five. Oh, one nine eleven seven three five. Look at that. Oh, this must be Francis. Green bottle under. Hmm. Wonder what that means. Green bottle under. Under what? Yeah, I'd like to know. But first of all, Tex, you've got some explaining to do. Need something. Uh, I understand you have a sister named Jane Nash. I understand you have a sister named Jane Nash. Mm -hmm. So what if I do? I found a pretty nasty letter from someone named Jane Nash in the Raleigh's desk. That don't mean it was my sister. Hey, you've been snooping, haven't you? In the Raleigh's stuff? In my stuff? Okay, you just calm down, Mr. Tex. I'm just very observant, that's all. My that's business ain't none of your business. And that includes any sisters I may or may not have. You need to go. I'm busy. But I need some rope. I'm busy. Jeez, fine then. Well, where else can we get some rope? Maybe we can go over his head here and just take a peek and see if... Uh, I should have asked him for the rope first. Oh, there's some rope. That's not sturdy enough, is it? Hmm. Oh, you know what? When he's cooled down, I bet you he's going to ask us to feed the horses. I bet you dollars to donuts. He's going to say, well, I need help. Uh. He's going to ask us. Yeah, I, I bet you. I bet you. When we're able to ask him for some rope he's gonna say well why don't you go ahead and feed the horses <laughs> the horses need a feeding <laughs> make sure to feed the right man of everything the pink stuff oats <laughs> make sure it's rationed correctly take a look at the chalkboard for better instructions <laughs> I don't got time to teach you myself <laughs> and you can have your rope <laughs> okay uh, what? Oh yeah. Wait, keep your eyes peeled for a green bottle that's under something. What? A green bottle that's under something. I don't see any green bottle around here. I don't see any rope either. Let's let's check in here. Green bottle that's under something. Mm, nope. Not a gosh darn thing in here. Let's talk to Dave. Hello, Nancy. 
Something I can do for you? Oh. Uh, I'll let you get back to work. Ma'am? Ma'am. Oh! That old southern charm. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Nothing going on with the chickens either. My phone keeps going off. Like I've got some kind of message or something like that. No, there's nothing going on there. Um, green bottle under. Maybe in here. Green bottle. <gasps> there's some green bottles. Oh. Well, what's inside the bottle is green. <laughs> Um, let's check the den here. Green bottle. I accidentally found a birthday card. Looks like the rest of the message. Oh, okay. Keep your eyes peeled for a green bottle that's under something. There's so many colors in here. I'm not sh Well, oh, maybe we should call uh, Charlena. Maybe she'll know about a green bottle. Or is there a book called Green Bottle? <laughs> it's worth a shot. Oops. Ain't no oh. Oh. Oh, right. <laughs> Rancher's Book Guide, Part 2. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Look what I gosh darn did. Alright. Is there a green bottle in here? <laughs> no, there ain't nothing. Alright. Well, you know, I'm pretty much stumped. I guess we should do this again and take another look in there. Just to be certain. Oh, right. I forget how this one went. Six, eight, ten, four. Eight, ten. 12, 8, 10, 2, 6, 12, 8, 10, 2, 6, 4, 12. <laughs> oh, see, there's the other half of the other picture. I wonder how you open this. Done it before. Now let's open this one again. Uh-oh. Of course, now I forget entirely how. Oh my. Oh, 7 9 11 7 9 11 1. It's just a circle. Oh, okay. But I've got the same. See, this is interesting. I've got the same portrait here. But maybe this one doesn't come up. But there's a picture of her father somewhere lying about. I'm pretty sure. Green bottle. We have that number written down too. I like vexing your brain. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I like vexing your brain. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. All right. <laughs> Let's call Charlena. I'm sure she has something to say about all this. She did want to know when we opened uh, the trunk as well. Charlena Purcell's Ooh, office. Hi, rude. this is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Miss Purcell? She told me to put you right through. She even told me to make sure you didn't have to listen to that recording again. You really rate. Well, Hello, Nancy. So what have you discovered? I opened that trunk and found a locket watch in it that used to belong to Francis. And was anything in the locket watch? 
Half a picture. I'm pretty sure what's there is a picture of Frances. I think the missing half was of her father. Anyway, on the back it said, Green Bottle Under. Hmm, wonder what that means. Well... It looks like the rest of the sentence is on the half that got torn off. I know a lot about the Humbers, but I don't know anything about a green bottle. Hmm. What happened to all of Dirk Valentine's ill-gotten gains? That's what I'd really like to know. Oh, from his robberies and such. Oh, um, gosh, I, I don't know. Actually, I may know what happened to it. Actually, I may know what happened to it. If you're talking about the rumor that Dirk hid his fortune in such a way that only Francis would oh, be able to right. find it, I know all about it, and oh. I tend to believe it. Seeing that Dirk was basically just a high-spirited, fun-loving guy who loved to take risks. The yeah. thing is, after Dirk's demise, Francis spent the rest of her life teaching school in Ohio, oh. which strongly suggests that she never found the treasure. So, the rumor probably isn't true. Mm, I don't know. I think it I is. have reason to believe that it is. Yeah. Really? Tell me. Tell I found girl. a letter from Dirk that Francis never read. It told her how to start looking for what he'd hidden for her. His clues were rather obtuse, though. For example? For example, he refers to her favorite flowers and the flowers on her favorites. Do you know what that means? No, and that's the problem. Whatever clues he left for her no doubt relate to things only she and no one else would understand. Hmm. Well, perseverance. Well, I'm going to try to figure it out anyway. That's, That's right. the spirit. And if you think there's something I can help you with, please do not hesitate to call. Thanks, Charlie. Talk to you soon. You do that. <laughs> you do that. You do that. Okay. Keep your eyes peeled. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Well, let's talk to Shorty again. Miss Nancy, how may I be of service? Have you ever met Mary Yazzie? Of course. Nice lady. I mean, for the most part. Gets real unfriendly when the subject of the Rowleys comes up. Yeah, I noticed that. Hmm. Do you know anything about the piece of property she's been trying to buy from the Raleigh's? Yes, well, I know yes. she says she wants to buy it because she feels spiritually drawn to it. But right. I think she's got something up her sleeve. Oh, Nancy, it's great having you here. I mean, I like to talk, you know? I like to converse, to debate, to discuss. You like to gossip, don't you? Mm-hmm. You like to gossip, don't you? More than anything, which isn't a bad thing. People like you and I are fascinated by the human condition, that's all. So, who else do you want to talk about? Uh, nobody really. <laughs> well, uh -huh. better get going. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, bye. Really rather not discuss nothing. Uh, okay, well, I'm curious. Like, I am just really curious. Well, now we kind of know about Mary Ozzie's... I haven't done uh, that yet. Okay, we don't technically know. <laughs> I thought we knew. Um, where are we going to find rope? You know what? Let's give the Raleigh's another call. Probably a good idea. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Raleigh. It's Nancy again. Hi, Nancy. It's Nancy. I can hear that. <laughs> How is Mr. Raleigh doing? Let's get something straight right now. Even though we're Bess and George's aunt and uncle and not yours, I want you to call us Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed too. Got that? All right. Good. Now, what was the question? Now that's How sweet. is Mr. Ra I mean, Uncle Ed doing? Well, he's running a slight fever, so the doctors are a little concerned. Oh, I'm fine. That's the They're going to for keep you. him here overnight, just country to make sure mother. he isn't developing some kind of infection. Oh, but enough about us. How are you doing? Well, I delivered that envelope. I delivered that envelope to Mary yeah, Yazzie. Let me get the call up. She oh. seemed a little upset when she read that you'd turned her down. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint her, but if we sell that property to her, it would send a signal to other would-be buyers that we're interested in selling the ranch off bit by bit, and we're not. Right, right. Okay, I could see that for sure. Very reasonable. 
What does she want the property for? I have no idea. Mm. The parcel she wants to buy is nowhere near her store, and there's nothing but rocks on it. Maybe someone else there at the ranch knows, but we sure don't. Interesting. So it's nowhere near her store. Interesting. Didn't she say that it was right along the back end of her property where they meet? Hmm. Someone's not telling the truth. I don't think it's Aunt Bet. <laughs> I heard about the phantom horse. Was last night the first time it showed up? As far as I know, it was the strangest thing. Shorty kept babbling about how it was the ghost of the horse that belonged to some outlaw. Dirk Valentine? But that was right after Ed got himself fit, and we were all running around trying to get him into the truck to take him to the hospital, and I really wasn't paying much attention. <sighs> Do you have any idea hmm. where the horse came from? I have a thought None on that. whatsoever. She wants to know where that phantom horse came from. I was hoping she could tell us. You're the detective, dear. If you want to snoop around and see what you can find out about that creature, by all means, please do. Now, that's interesting. I guess it sounds like Shorty was trying to get everyone's attention to the phantom horse and about Dirk Valentine. Well, meanwhile, everyone's running around concerned about Uncle Ed and getting him to the hospital because he was bit by a rattlesnake. He's kind of sus now. That, that, that makes Shorty a little sus. I mean, wouldn't he be concerned that Uncle Ed got bit too? And wouldn't he just kind of forget about any of this other nonsense and just, you know, focus on Ed? Hmm. I don't know. That's that, that's just a little bit concerning. Just a little bit. Why do you have a painting of Francis Humber? I just thought it would give the den some character, that's all. I found it in the tack room under a pile of junk. So the former owners left behind a lot of stuff? I swear, it's like no one who lived at Shadow Ranch ever bothered to take their things with them when they left. <laughs> when we moved in, the place was literally full of junk. Oh, wow. What did you do with it? I sold most of it to Mary Yazzie. She gets oh. a lot of antique collectors in her store. Some things I kept, like Francis's favorite recipes. And that Ooh. ridiculous blanket chest. You insisted on keeping that. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I kept that triangular-shaped chest in the den. It used to belong to Merrill Humber. He was Francis's father. And I figured since I was keeping that picture of Francis, it was only fair that I keep something of his. What kind of logic is that? Oh, <laughs> It doesn't look like Bess and George are going to get here today. That's too bad. Why not? Their plane had to land in Omaha because of mechanical problems. They don't know when they'll be taking off. So, you'll have all those cowboys to yourself for a while. <laughs> that Dave is pretty cute. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> Dave's okay, but Tex is a different story. Yeah. That man scared the bejeepers out of me when he came in to interview. But he kind of grows on you. And he takes real good care of the horses. Yeah, he does seem like he has a soft I'll side. I'll be in touch. Under there. Call us any time. All right. Well. Now we know a little more. I think we... Let's talk to... Hello, Nancy. Dave. Something I can do for you? I'll let you get back to work. Take care. All right. Nothing from Dave. Let's see if Tex will finally talk to us. You ready to talk to us? Not that my family's any oh, of your fine. concern, but my sister did work for the Raleigh's back in Phoenix. She got fired, she got mad, but she's over it. Okay? Okay. Say no more? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that before? Because it makes me look bad. I figured no one'd ever find out, and when you did, I just got all flustered like. Okay. Hmm, not because you're helping her get back to Raleigh's. Oh, so all that bad stuff that's been going on around here, it's not because you're helping her get back at the Raleigh's for letting her go. So all the bad stuff that's been going on around I here, gotta ask. it's not because you're helping her get back at the Raleigh's for letting we her go? Ask. Fact is, my sister can be kind of a flake. I'd have probably fired her too. Hmm, okay. Straight up. All right. Oh, a rope. Yes. I need a rope. Do you think I could borrow yours? Here we go. Nope. Well. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. All right. <laughs> that's, that's lovely. Looks like we're going to have to try to find a rope on our own. Oops. All right. 
Now, where are we going to find a rope? You know, maybe Mary Ozzie has a rope. I bet you she does. All right, Bob. Let's get the heck and heck out of here. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, let's go. <gasps> There's a rope. Oh yeah, he won't let us have it. We can't borrow his rope. Well, fine. We will find a way. All right. Okay. Oh yeah, that is hot. Hot, hot, hot. Well, maybe Mary can help us humble little gift shop. Hi, can I help you with something? It was great talking to you. Catch you later. Alright. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Huh. Well then. I wonder then. I'm really curious. Steam by asking about his sister. Later he apologized said he doesn't blame the raw as but can I believe him? Hmm, yeah, not sure. So both Tex and Shorty seem a little sus right now. The sus meter is just a little bit, not much, but a little bit. Going up there. I haven't done that yet. Get Tex's permission to go riding. I don't know why that's a task, because we can go riding. Well, All right. Huh. You know, I just couldn't tell ya. Maybe we should call uh, the Hardy Boys uh, about about the uh, about the kindling. Because it kind of feels like that's No the sense going rough. in there without a horse to ride. Well. I don't want to lug this saddle around all, all right. day. <laughs> I should put it back. I'm so eager. Okay. There we go. Now, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna call the Hardy Boys again. And see about the wood. Maybe we should call Bess again. Bess and George, see what they're up to. Ugh. Hello? Me again. What's the status of your plane? Nobody will tell us a thing. Ow. And now a bunch of really dark clouds are rolling in. What's going on with you, Nan? Has either of you two ever read anything by an author named Charlena Purcell? She writes romance novels that take place in the Old West. That rules me out. I saw her on a talk show once. Seemed kind of full of herself. Why do you ask? <laughs> I had to call her in order to open this old trunk at Mary Yazzie's. She knows a lot about the people who used to live at Shadow Ranch. I bet I know more about 19th century clothing design than she does. <laughs> uh, well, maybe you can find her book in the gift shop and give it a good read. <laughs> I found a locket that belonged to Frances Humber. It had a picture in it with the words Green Bottle Under written on the back. Maybe the bottle's a clue to where Valentine's food is. Could be. Could be. Although I'm really not sure how. If we're right and Francis never found that treasure. Well, that green bottle obviously meant something to her. I think you should find it first and ask questions later. That's it for now. Mm. Two words, Nancy. Call us. <laughs> all right, all right. Now let's call Frank and Joe. We need to figure out this kindling situation. I really thought we had enough kindling. Now what? Hi, Frank. Nancy, what a relief. <laughs> Your client's still bugging you? He calls yeah. every 3.25 minutes. Oh my you can goodness. set your watch by him. Uh, but the good news is, he's being so obnoxious that we're working faster than we've ever worked before. We're going to solve this case in record time. Well. Like they say, every cloud has a silver lining. Uh-oh. Uh, Incoming call. Think it's him? 3.25 minutes. It's him. Want <laughs> me to hang up? No. He can leave a message. So what's going on there? 
All right, a hint for the I'm cooking fire. I'm not sure fire. how to go about building an outdoor cooking fire like Shorty asked me to. Any hints? Three words. Tinder, kindling, and fuel. In right. that order. Tinder is anything that burns real easily. Kindling is small type wood. Right. And fuel is big type wood. But it can't be too big. To build this fire, you might have to split. And to make sure no one winds up kicking the bucket, don't forget to fill one. Well... That didn't really help us too much now, did it? Oh, boy. I could sure use a hint when it comes to using that piece of paper Dirk left for Francis to keep track of where the rock pictures are. Just look for petroglyphs, and when you see one, mark its position on the grid. Eventually, a message will appear, if you're careful. Yeah, Catch you later. Sounds good. We Bye. Need, uh, we need some rope. <laughs> okay. Uh, aw, let's call home. Let's see if we can get a hold of Mr. Drew. Or Hannah. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beach. Hi, Hannah. Bye, Hannah. <laughs> Aww. Okay. So there's absolutely no more kindling. This must be where Shorty wants me to build a campfire. Right, right, yes. We, we gathered that. <laughs> but I just don't understand. Is the rest of this kindling. Unless it's... No, it wouldn't be in the garden. Hmm. Heck no. We already got that kindling that was there. Gosh. Darn. I know that there's... There's, uh... There's kindling behind the chicken hut. But we can't go... We can't go behind the chicken hut. Hello, Nancy. Oops. Something I can do uh, for see, you? See, right there. You get back to work. Appreciate right it. up there behind the chicken hut. Oh. Absolutely impossible. Well. Well. I'm a little stumped. We've got the... we got the... Tinder. So far, so good. And this is the kindling. I need more kindling. Ah. <sighs> Do y'all know where, where the rest of this kindling would be? Does anyone know? <laughs> My antiperspirant's going to get a workout today. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, does anybody know? Let me know in the comments, because looking for this wood is a real pain in the booty. Uh, I don't think there'd be any wood in the house. Pretty much seen everything we need to around here. Yeah, yeah, there isn't really much to, uh, to use. I am really stumped. Miss Nancy. How may I be of service? Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. Bye, shorty. Hey, you're crowding me here, Nancy. Uh. I need elbow room when I cook. Sorry. <laughs> Where in the heck and heck is this kindling? <gasps> Rattlesnakes. This is probably a good idea to read this because we found, remember we found that rattlesnake? Out in the trail is the most common. It gets its name from the markings in the back. It's a flat. They're excellent swimmers. In the winter, rocky, they may be found in open areas. While in the hot summer months, they tend to remain in the shade in the daytime during most of their hunting at night. Oh, so it'd wait till nighttime, maybe. Fortunately, I always shake its rattle in the morning. If you encounter a rattlesnake, leave it alone. Chances are, when you return, the snake will be gone. Hmm. Well. Okay, so it sounds like we have to return at night time. Well. You know, I'm still pretty stumped here. Let's see what 
text. Need message. something? Talk to you later. Oh, if you last that long. Whatever, Tex. Now this is just nuts. There's gotta be some rope. Huh? Around here. Nope. Not a one. Well, shoot. <laughs> I am so stumped right now. Alright. Let's take Bob back out to that trail. I don't know if that's going to do us any good. Worth a shot though, right? I'm very curious. I'm just so very curious. Maybe I missed some kindling along that trail. I must have. I really must have. There's really no other explanation. Because there's none on the ranch. <laughs> and there's some rope right there I'd like to grab <laughs> on my way out. Alright. Off to the trail shop. Or the trail stop. Alright. There's got to be oops. No, there's gotta be sun kindling around here. It's all pretty dry too. Music now, it's getting very scary like. <gasps> I don't like that. This is creepy. Like we've stumbled across something we shouldn't have. Oh, that rattlesnake. We're gonna leave that rattlesnake well alone. Oh, I don't like that music. It seems like there's all kinds of kindling around here. I think I'll let Bob do the walking. Well, if you say so. Only email. Oh, pardon me. Huh. Uh. Can't check that off yet. Mary Ozzy, we have to figure out why she's so eager. Maybe we're distracted so much by the pin. Better not leave old Bob behind. That we're not paying attention to that, uh, that little piece of info. Maybe we need to figure out why Mary Ozzy wants uh, a piece of land. Oh, part of me. Oh. Hmm. Maybe we haven't looked hard enough around here. Something goes here. Right, 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 right. Ah, oh, we're out of time. Well, folks, we can we can withstand a few more moments just until we get a lead or something because frankly, this is kind of annoying, isn't it? A 
eleven. Now there's nothing in here we could use. Sheriff's badge isn't gonna do anything. Scissors isn't gonna do anything. Is this a green bottle? <laughs> Could have once been. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I don't know. It's one of those stumpy situations. Hmm. Well, shoot. Hmm. Have we seen everything there is to see? I believe we have. Hi, can I help you with something? It was great talking to you. Come in again. Let's try playing this game again. Try to get another coin. I could use the keys. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of forget. Man. <laughs> oh, shoot. Now look what I've done. Gosh darn it. Reset. Really done it. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm cornered now. Okay. Let's try this again. Shoot. I did it again. How to defeat this level? How the heck did I do it last time? wondering <laughs> how I did that last time. Alright, so maybe if we get through level 3 again, I'll get a coin, another coin to play with, or something magical. Ha ha ha. I got you away from you now. You can't catch me. Wally Coyote. Oh, it's your ear. <laughs> Where's my coin? Another one for my collection. 
It's now got a bunch of coins. I wonder if there's any relevance to that now that I have a bunch of coins instead of just one coin. You know? Hmm. Hi, can I help you with something? Nope. It was great talking <laughs> to you. Thanks for stopping by. She's a sweetheart. I really like Mariazzi. But I feel like we need some reason to get her away from the counter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel as though if we're going to figure out why she doesn't want people, or she wants the land, we're going to have to check that stuff. But, hmm. This is very peculiar. Now, there's no sense of going back to Cougar Bend, right? I guess we could try one last time and just see if there's any, uh, any kindling. But I feel like we checked it pretty thoroughly. There really wasn't much, uh, much there to, to utilize. Watch there be kindling right up on the top. Oh god, wouldn't that just be hilarious? Like, that should work. <laughs> well. Well. Let's try this way first. Nothing? Ugh. Well, we can't go over there. And over here, there ain't nothing but a thing. Shoot. <gasps> oh, see, look at all these branches. Stump, y'all. Unless, is there something in here? No. No. Nothing. Not a dang thing. <laughs> huh. Well, folks. I'm stumped. I've never been the stump before. Excuse me, never been this stump before at all, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not sure where to begin, where to stop, where to finish. Very interesting. Huh. Well, let's make sure to take this off first. Uh. Okay, now that I know too, I just noticed there, you don't have to loosen up the saddle every time to take it off. Um, oh, I did it again. So rope we cannot find. Rope we cannot find. Kindling we cannot find. Nope. Not a gosh darn thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm driving myself a little crazy here. Alright, well, that is the end of the episode. So, we will end it here with Bob, Clyde, and Ace. <laughs> like usual. Our ending spot. All right. Well, folks, thank you so very much for tuning in. Um, if you know or have any idea where this kindling might be, please let me know in the comments below. Please. Or if you have any hints or ideas on as to how we are going to figure out 
Mariazzi's true intentions uh, for buying that uh, small piece of land off Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet. Because she does claim it's for spiritual reasons, however, there may be another reason behind it, seeing as this isn't the first time she's uh, asked and inquired to, uh, to purchase it. So, we'll see. But if you know anything or have any leads, please let us, please let me know, Clue Crew, what your thoughts are down below, and I will be sure to get back to you, and we'll definitely check it out in the next episode. Um, other than that, rope, too. Now, I don't know, I feel like once we get the kindling for the fire, there will be some kind of transitional scene, a cutscene or something. Uh, maybe it'll be nighttime. And then that'll that'll probably open up a whole uh, can of worms of opportunity for us. Um, might be able to check some things out, like uh, snoop a little more, especially where Tex is in there, and see at his desk and see what he's really working on, um, and probably get into the kitchen too, where Bob's uh, sorry, where uh, Shorty's cooking. Uh, I feel like once it's nighttime, he won't be in the kitchen. He'll probably be in bed, so we can probably sneak past and check that other little uh, pantry nook desk looking thing see if there's anything interesting in there some new leads um, other than that though yeah I'm really not sure where to go from here very very interesting I'm very stumped I need your help clue crew Let's see what maybe you've seen or heard or are thinking of something I haven't come across yet or thought about so we gotta put our minds together together <laughs> all right well on that note thank you guys so very much for watching i love each and every one of you so very much and like i always say this is my absolute full pleasure to do i love sharing this experience with you guys the mutual love and admiration for nancy drew and all things mystery that's what we're here for all right guys thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time Nancy Drew, The Secret of Shadow Ranch. Wow. <laughs> Alright. Toodles for now. Ta-ta. Ciao. Till next time. Howdy, folks. Did you like that video? Well, then why don't you go ahead and give that thumbs up a smackaroo. Don't want to miss out on the next episode? Give the subscribe button some love and make sure to turn your notifications on. That way I can give you a bell a ring let you know that it is served. Still need more to chew on? Take a bite of my new YouTube Instagram account at TravyJ Space to keep up to date with the channel's inner workings and news of upcoming projects and episodes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.